I remember when I was a student at the university, a professor of paleontology, you know, paleontology is something related with fossils, dinosaurs, biology, told me that if I want to generate credibility and trust in my reports, I have to add geostatistical studies in them. And that's the truth. At the end, if we can support our results on geostatistical studies, the conclusions, the final decisions are going to be stronger. Can you imagine the importance of the geostatistical studies in paleontology? Then what is going to happen with the environmental sector? It is very, very, very important. You know, at the beginning, the geostatistical studies was using exclusively at the meaning sector. But now we can use all these tools, all these resources on the environmental projects. And that's the reason because I'm here today to show you, to teach you how you can add those geostatistical studies on your projects, not only for the academical purpose, but also for the development of your professional career. I'm Marcel, I'm senior hydrogeologist, and I'm the instructor of this fourth geostatistic course. Let me introduce this fourth geostatistic course. Remember that the first course it was related about univariate analysis. The second course it was about bivariate analysis. The first and the second course it was for the exploratory data analysis. And the third course it was about structural analysis, you know, variography analysis. And the last course is going to be the culmination of all the courses I did related with R integrated in QGIS. And what we are going to see in that course is the scripts related to the different types of Kriegen interpolation and also the, the creation and the addition of the map to show the final results. Then in this fourth course, I would like to put the the things in a real context. It means that we are going to use real data for all the lessons. And we are going to do all the process. We are going to start for the collection of the data, then preparing the data to be analyzed. Then we are going to do the univariate analysis, the bivariate analysis. We are going to do the structural analysis. Then we are going to do the cross-validation. We are going to analyze the isotropy or anisotropy of the data. Also, we are going to do the interpolation that is, is going to be the new part and also the map edition. Then we are going to do a full geostatistical study with real data. Then the first lesson is going to be about ordinary Kriegen. In this lesson, we are going to work with data that is associated with the ozone concentration. Concretely, we are going to be working with the air quality index at the state of California. For the second lesson, we are going to be working with universal Kriegen. In this case, we are going to use data that is related to the groundwater elevation. And we are going to use data from New Mexico and Texas. There is an important aquifer over there and we are going to use that data to do the analysis associated with universal Kriegen. The third lesson is going to be about regression Kriegen. In this case, we are going to use the, the same data as the lesson two, but with the regression Kriegen, what we are going to do is separate the trend from the residuals and work with these two pair of uh, data sets individually. You are going to see that when we are working with regression Kriegen, we are more flexible in terms of making the interpretation of the data. For the fourth lesson, we are going to work with uh, Kriegen with external drift. In this case, we are going to use the Muse River data set and we are going to see that this type of Kriegen is a variety, we can say, of the universal Kriegen. But in this case, what happened is that the main variable has a trend that is related with the auxiliary variable. 
but when we are using universal Kriegin, the trend is associated with the coordinates. That's the main difference. And the last lesson that is going to be about uh, ordinary Kriegin, I didn't decide yet what type of data I'm going to use. Then I'm open. If someone at the community is interested in share um, and data that he or she is using, I'm open to create a lesson with that data. But if not, I'm thinking to use a digital elevation model about the, the elevation of the terrain that we can get some high resolution um, rasters in Europe and also take some uh, stations with temperature and do the Cochrane associated with the temperature that is depending on the elevation of the terrain. That it's a pretty interesting Cochrane that I can get the data very easily. But as I said, I'm open to use other type of data. But remember that the Cochrane is pretty restrictive, okay? And we need a very, very specific data that can be used to do Cochrane. Then be very careful, and if you want to share your data, make sure that we can use that data to do the, the ordinary Cochrane. Also, I would like to mention that the first geostatistic course, it was very, very, very successful, with more than 400 students enrolled at the GeoRGB community website, and also thousands of visualizations at the GeoRGV YouTube channel. And the second course, it was not successful as the first one. And also it happens the same with the third course. It was not successful as the first one. And the main reason is because the second and third course, it was premium content and the people has to pay to have access to the lessons, while the first course, it was totally for free. But let me tell you that I changed the website and now I created a membership. You can still access to the website, to the free content as a free member. But if you want to have access to the premium content, you don't have to pay for the courses individually. Now, just paying the membership, you are going to have full access to all the content. I created different levels for the membership. The first level is the copper. Then for that one, you are going to pay $30 for an initial uh, f uh, fee subscription. And then you are going to pay $10 per month. And with this membership level, you are going to have full access to all the courses. And also you can make questions and I will answer the questions, but that question has to be related with the courses. The second membership is going to be the silver. For the silver, you are going to pay uh, $30 as an uh, initial fee registration. And then you are going to pay $45 per six months. And the gold member is going to be, again, you are going to be paying $30 for the initial registration and then $70 for a full year of subscription. And also for the gold level, I'm going to give you for free one hour of mentoring then you can use that hour of mentoring as you like. For example, I can review your project. We can make a face-to-face -face if you want to talk about something related to geostatistics or hydrogeology or geology, or even we can be talking about the, the anything related with the courses. You know, anything. It's just one hour of mentoring and you can use it as you want, you know, even by email, by face-to-face. -face, that's up to you. And I would like to tell you that, for example, for the copper membership is for those kind of people that they are interested just maybe in one specific lesson, or maybe they are interested in just one course and they don't want to pay more than one or two months. And then they are going to take the plan that they have to pay month to month, right? You can cancel any of the subscriptions anytime. But for the silver level, you're going to pay six months, right? And this level is for that kind of people that they want to stay longer at the website because they want to take one or two courses and they want to make the courses just little by little. They want to 
assimilate all the concepts really well and they don't want to get as stressful, you know, doing the courses. Because, you know, the courses are pretty long, right? The third course, I believe, is close to 10 hours and it's going to take a bit, you know, to, to, to do all the things, you know, to understand all the concepts. And it is pretty normal if you want to take that course that is going to take longer than one month, right? And for the last level, that is the goal level, is for those people that are pretty interesting in all the content that we are doing at the website. And they want also to support the content and the things I'm doing in the website. And they want to stay at least one year, right? And also they want to take advantage of the one hour of mentoring for free. Also, unfortunately, I have to say that I'm not going to be able to answer all the questions. I'm going to be answered just the questions that are from people that is membership on the website. You have to understand that at the website, currently, we are more than 1,100 students. That's awesome. And also at the YouTube channel, there are more than 4,500 uh, subscribers and in, in Facebook there are around 3,500 followers and all the people is making questions and unfortunately I don't have time and I have to put a filter to decide what questions I'm going to answer and that filter is going to be the membership. Then if you are membership I'm going to answer your questions but if you are not a membership and uh, if I don't have time, I cannot answer your questions. Uh, hopefully you can understand this position and it is a question of uh, volume, right? Every day I have a lot of questions to answer and I don't have time to all of them. I'm pretty sorry, but that's the filter I'm going to use. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope you are going to enjoy the fourth geostatistic course. I believe it's pretty, pretty interesting content. You are not going to find anything even similar, you know, because everything is explained with a, a very small detail and we are going to do all the process, you know. After taking, for example, all these courses, you are going to get an intermediate level on geostatistics and then you can make any type of report related to geostatistics and you are going to have a great knowledge on, on geostatistics and that's really important if you want to grow up you know in that sector that has uh, a very lack of, of people that has really good experience in geostatistics I believe it's going to be a very important type of position that can be full at the future and it's going to be also very well paid. Okay, then see you on the first lesson.